Howdy folks, today we're going to be doing the infamous fender flare mod on the Jeep Wrangler. Uh, so basically what we're going to do is cut down the fenders uh, that are currently on there now to allow more room to flex uh, for both the uh, front and rear tires. Uh, with the new shoes that I have on Rock Trooper now, it allows me a little room uh, in order to flex the axles um, without trimming it out. So ultimately what I'm going to do is uh, get new uh, fender flares uh, put on, but for right now it's not in the budget. Uh, we're going to take the uh, inexpensive way out and cut these out to allow for more space uh, for the tires to flex. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tools uh, that we're going to need in order to do this mod. So here are the tools we're going to need. Uh, not too many, really just some cutting tools um, and then uh, at your own preference um, I got some edge trim. I'm going to use the edge trim in order to uh, conceal the cut lines uh, around the fender flares. Um, completely up to you. Uh, these are about $12 at AutoZone. Uh, they come in 18 feet uh, pack. I should be able to get away with one. I'll probably need two, so I got it just in case. So we'll see what happens there. Um, you're going to need something to cut the fender flares with. I'm going to use uh, this saw. I have a few different blades that I am going to try uh, to see which ones work best. Uh, metal blades. I have some fine wood blades. Um, so we'll go through a, a couple of them and, and again see which works best for us. Uh, we're also going to need a Dremel. Um, this is going to be used to cut out the, the finer areas uh, around the fender flares, uh, most likely up around the, uh, the grill, uh, and then in order to cut off uh, some areas. And we're also going to use probably some type of grinding um, attachment or, or something else in order to you know, kind of um, you know, work in the areas uh, around the trim that we're cutting out. So, there we go. Uh, hopefully that will be all the tools that I need. If I do happen to use any more, I'll put them in the video and you guys can check it out. So let's get started. Alright, before I started cutting away, I wanted to uh, just give everyone a walkthrough of what the plan currently is. Um, the plan may change as I cut through, but I wanted to uh, show you what the objective is. Alright, so on the front flare, there is some, uh, it's probably tough to show you guys on video, but here's the support piece uh, under the front flare. Basically what we want to do is cut it right below the support piece. We don't want to, we want to keep this in place, right? We want to have, you know, something that will actually keep the uh, fender flare on there and not flapping in the wind when we're driving uh, down the highway or basically anywhere. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by marking off a line or maybe just using the Dremel to cut a, uh, a small line across here so I know where to start. As we go through here, you want to keep your uh, inside um, flare piece, right? This will keep all the dirt and mud and everything else from getting up inside your engine. So you want to keep this. The goal here is going to be to keep you know, all these inside components and really just cut off uh, the, this piece of the flare here. That will give the uh, tire a little bit more room to flex. So I'm going to get the Dremel and we'll cut that out first. And again, that's going to be right there. When we cut that through, we'll see it come through on the other side on the front. And then we'll use that as our starting guide uh, in order to uh, line up the, the rest of the cuts for the front fenders. Alright, so what I originally wanted to do was cut off under the uh, under part of the fender flare, right where the uh, uh, piece of the frame holds up that flare. Uh, but I was unable to get a, uh, my Dremel underneath there. I didn't have a large enough cutoff tool. Uh, so what I did is I measured uh, from the smallest point underneath. It's about a little over three inches. So I marked off three inches on the front and then all the way across uh, from the bottom. Um, we'll cut it there uh, and then we'll clean it up on the back end to make sure you know, it looks you know, the way we want it. So I am unable to cut a straight line uh, freehand. So what I'm going to do is just uh, take some duct tape. Uh, and then mark off the areas um, that I want to cut off. Uh, that'll be a lot easier for me to um, use the, uh, the saw in order to cut everything off.
All right, now that we have the uh, fender flares all taped up on the areas that we're going to cut, we're going to use a Dremel uh, in order to cut out small incision points that we're going to use for uh, inserting the uh, larger small to make the, uh, the final cuts. Let's go ahead. Okay, so you'll see here that we made our first cut. We basically just went from end to end on the front of the fender flare. Now what we're going to do is make the cut going up. So we're going to make the cut going up here. Before we do that, we need to remove this light. So you're just going to reach up inside here. Uh, there's a little pin, um, just like all the other lights um, that the Jeep has. Just unplug the connector uh, right here and just tuck it back here. Uh, and then there's this little clip. Actually, there's one, two... Three, four, five, six. Uh, that we're going to need to cut off in order to get to this um, this piece off of here. So in order to get the light, though, we really need to cut this one off first. Now that we have the light out, we're going to continue cutting. Uh, this time we're going to work up the, uh, the side of the fender flare, starting from the bottom, and we're going to work our way all the way back. Now that we have the sidewall of the fender flare off, there's a few areas that up underneath that we're going to need to cut out as well. Um, so you'll see them here. This is the uh, holder for the uh, the uh, light. Uh, we got a couple brackets here um, that we're also going to cut off. And then as we get back to here, so this is the inner lining, right? So it has nothing to attach to since we popped off these uh, rivets that were attached here. So basically, what we're going to do is wind up cutting it right here uh, along the body cutting up the side and then right where that piece meets the body we're probably going to wind up drilling a hole um, and putting a, a rivet or something to uh, keep that attached to the body there because again we want to keep this uh, insert part um, of the flare uh, still in place to, to keep all the debris from getting in the engine so let's go ahead and we're going to cut off these uh, extra pieces up underneath so we've added a new tool to the arsenal, uh, broke out the uh, reciprocating saw just so I can get to these larger pieces, these bracket pieces uh, that were holding up the uh, uh, outside part of the fender flare. Uh, I'm going to need to 
a little bit longer blade and, uh, and a little bit more versatility in order to get in there and cut them off. You see, we got them cut off. Now I'll use the uh, the Dremel um, or the, uh, the other saw in order to, to kind of grind these out a little bit and make them a little more uh, finer up top. Now we're going to cut off this final piece here. I'm just going to follow this line basically uh, straight down an angle uh, to the end of the uh, uh, the fender flare up where it meets here. Uh, but we're going to need to kind of work this in uh, a little bit close to uh, the body panel here. So we got to be uh, nice and slow with this one. Don't worry about any uh, any chunks or unevenness. Um, once we take the tape off, we'll take a look at it, and then uh, we'll file it down um, just to get that straight line back again. All right, so we're looking at here is the uh, passenger side uh, inner fender flare, um, and since we want to keep this area basically to keep again all the debris and stuff out of the engine compartment. Um, I've kind of drawn a line there on the area that I want to cut, or at least that I think uh, would be the best cut, because we want to keep this rivet here uh, to hold up the fender flare, but we want to yank this part out right here, right, the part that sticks out, um, and then but keep this inside part. So if you see the line, we're going to keep this line to the inside part right here. We're going to cut up here, up and underneath, right, because this underneath area is that right there, which we're going to mount back to the body. Uh, and then we're going to cut up this line all the way across uh, and then up to here and then that should detach it as you can see here this will detach it from the inside part of the fender flare So there's still some areas that I want to cut out around the front fender. So you see here, this is going to be basically the, the support piece for the front of the fender. I'm going to cut off this piece here because what I'm going to do is just uh, round this up right here. So I'm going to mark off, I'm going to cut this piece off right here, and I'm going to mark off on the front where that piece lines up so I can start that, uh, use that as a starting point to round off the uh, edge of the fender and to take this point off right here. Now I'm going to mark off an area on the fender uh, right after the support where I'm going to start the cut. And then also on the top area where I'm going to end the cut. Now since I can't draw a straight line, um, I just found the plate. You can really use anything with a, a radius that meets um, the, the needs of uh, where your cut's going to be. Um, so I'm just going to place the uh, outside part of the plate. And there we go. So there's our cutting radius. Now that we've 
completed the cutting of the exterior part of the fender flare, uh, we can remove all the teeth and then start cleaning up the areas that we cut, uh, evening everything out. Now we're going to cut the radius for the uh, back part of the front fender flare. Um, using the same idea, I just took a um, uh, paper plate, cut it in half so I can work it in here, and then set up a, uh, a guide uh, that I can use to cut. Came out nice. We're just going to use a file just to kind of clean up the areas that were not cut evenly. Uh, and then take off all the little pieces that are hanging. Now that we have all the cutting done on the fender flares, uh, it's time to put on the edge trim. Uh, this is completely optional. Um, you can leave it as is, uh, but just to get a, a nicer, uh, cleaner look to it, uh, just put the edge trim all around the cut. All right, now that we have the edging done and the exterior of the fender flare is complete, we still have a few items inside that we need to take care of. One being um, the uh, marker light. Um, I think I'm probably just going to drill this out a little bit and uh, attach it here, basically take the bolt off that's holding the fender here uh, and attach it right here for the time being um, until I can upgrade and, and get some LEDs. Um, I think that should do for now. I'll probably just bolt it in. Uh, and then maybe take a, a zip tie or something else and drill a little hole through here uh, just for some a little additional uh, As support. a temporary solution, I just basically zip tied the, uh, the, the uh, side marker light uh, up into the uh, uh, frame section of the fender flare uh, right here. You'll see there's a hole here. I didn't drill that, but I just put the zip ties through, uh, connect them through. At least it keeps the light in place um, for the time being uh, until I can work out a more permanent solution. All right, so for the back part of the front fender flare, uh, this is the side that's closest to the cabin area. I was going to drill a hole into the frame, but I decided not to do that. I think I'm going to look for a clip that I can use to connect the plastic piece here to the lip of the frame right underneath. So you see here, here's the frame and here's the plastic piece. If I can connect those up somehow and keep them in place, uh, just the tension from this piece being tucked behind the, uh, the body uh, will keep it in place. All right, doing the rear fender flares are going to be much easier uh, than what we did on the, uh, the front fender flares. Um, we're going to need to cut off these six plastic pins. Uh, there's going to be three across the front, one in the middle, two in the back. Uh, and that will get us started to uh, get the, uh, the fender flare off. Now the same as we did with the front fender flare, uh, we're going to tape out the uh, back fender flare because again I can't cut in a straight line and it's going to make it easier if I just tape it out and follow the line to cut it.
On the 10th anniversary edition, there is a plastic piece in between the uh, rear fender flare uh, and the metal bumper. Uh, we need to remove this. So what you're going to do is just use a 10mm uh, socket or a 10mm wrench. Um, there's three nuts. We're just going to take it off and then we'll be able to pull this plastic piece right off. Now that we have the exterior piece cut off, we're just going to basically pull this out. This is going to be the inner lining. Um, there's really nothing in, in the back here except for the, the body of the Jeep. So we're just going to yank this right out. I'm not planning on keeping it. So here's a close-up view of the uh, rear uh, fender well uh, that we took the uh, uh, fender flare off of, right? So really nothing back there that we need to be concerned about. Uh, probably get some some mud and some dirt and stuff like that up there, but it'll be easily uh, cleaned out uh, without a problem. Um, what this just leaves for me is a, a lot of room for some customizations later on. We'll have to see, maybe put a, a rock light up inside there for uh, the rear tires. Um, there you go. So what we're gonna do next is just peel the tape off the uh, fender flare, clean it up just like we did with the front one. Uh, and then put the uh, the, the trim uh, all around the outside of the flare. All right, front fender flare cutting is complete. Uh, we're basically gonna do the same thing uh, over on the driver's side that we did the passenger side. Uh, there shouldn't be any differences. Um, there it goes. So it gives uh, plenty of space uh, for flexing up front. Let's take a look at the back. Same thing, moving the fender flare, the inner piece, and the outside part of that fender does give a, a significant amount of room for that rear tire. So same process, we're gonna follow on the uh, driver's side, uh, the rear of the Jeep, and we should be good to go.